some moment ago, I issued a statement, you know, in my capacity as post development minister. I mean, saying that the team has been stranded is like being mild about it. I mean, you can, the, the, the situation that has faced them since yesterday, you know, can be described as an hostage situation. I mean, the team arrived, you know, Libya at about 8 p.m. And if you check the time now, that team has been holed up in the airport at El Abak Airport, you know, for more than upwards of about 17 hours now. I mean, the, the airport wasn't originally the airport of choice. I mean, they were, they, were, they, were, they were forced to divert without regard to their safety. And they've been holed up there since thereafter with no contact by any official of the Libyan Football Federation. The only contact that they've had since then has been, you know, security officials of Libya at the airport who have condoned up where they are staying, where they are, you know, they have been, you know, restricted, you know, and they cannot leave the airport. You know, so, but having said so, I think that we've also been, we've not been resting since yesterday. I mean, it's, um, I've been in touch with, you know, every official of government in our country. I mean, from the National Security Advisor to the DG, you know, Nigerian, you know, Intelligence Agency, I mean, to, you know, I mean, they may name it, I mean, I've been you know, to the Foreign Affairs Minister, who himself has also been in touch with, you know, our, our mission in, in Libya. I mean, everything has been on. I mean, I've been in constant touch with the president of NFF. I mean, I mean, the airport that they are holding, you know, in, it's not, you know, doesn't have internet, you know, facilities. So you can't even reach them. I mean, our luck is that the team captain, William Trostekon, has a UK number that you can reach, you know, in you know, the true direct line, the regular line. And then the, the, the team manager has a US, you know, number, is this for WhatsApp, which you can also reach. These are the only two people that I've been, you know, speaking with. Each time I call them, I request to speak with the president of NFL. I mean, that's the way we've communicated. I mean, this morning, I spoke to the chairman of Value Jet, you know, the, the, the airline that actually drifted them to Libya. And, you know, he's as concerned. I mean, every effort is being made. Uh, the most important for us for now is the safety of our senior national team and the safety of Nigerians who are part of that delegation. And I think every effort is being made to see how you know, they can return. I mean, again, this morning I was in a conference call with the president of CAF and the Secretary General of CAF, and I tried to employ them that they, should, they have to work with Nigeria, you know, to see that what is the most important thing is not, you know, going to go and play a match tomorrow, you know, in which case, the, you know, nobody can guarantee the safety. I mean, I put it to CAF that if from yesterday for about 17 hours, CAF hasn't been able to directly relate with the Libyan Football Federation, what guarantees can CAF make that the team can be safe, even if they were in a psychological state to still be part of them? But so that's where we are. As of the last time I tried to follow up, I mean, they were, you know, they had reached, you know, in the morning they were trying to see how they can get aviation fuel. You know, most of the documentation, you know, for the airline was, had already been concluded. So our hope is that, you know, this kind, you know, this kind of gory, you know, situation, this kind of, I mean, it's an um, unfortunate situation, you know, been brought you know, to an end. You know, but having said so, I've also, you know, put it to CAF that there must be an adverse consequence, you know, upon, you know, you know, the Libyan Football Federation. And you cannot achieve that consequence by insisting that the match goes ahead. I mean, otherwise you create a very dangerous precedent. And then football that is regarded as a unifier, you know, and all that, will no longer be a game of football anymore. Yes. The, the truth is that for people that have been holed up for about 17 hours, for people that were made to just, you know, stay in a mosquito-infested area, for people that have been kept without water, with no food since yesterday, I mean, there's nothing they will now say that we would not believe. I mean, it's, um, it's, um, it's, um, I've already told you that I urged CAF that instead of having to see how they can make arrangements for the match to go on, I've rather employed them to work with Nigeria and the Nigerian people and government to ensure that you know our players are safe and our team you know returns back to Nigeria. I mean that's what I've said. I mean it's it's, a, it's a, yeah yeah. So I agree. I agree with the team captain. I agree with the rest of the team. But as a finalist, you know, CAF might you know want to see. Just like you said, they want, they want to see the match. At the end of the day, three points are popping there. Uh, what would be you know, the point that you are pushing for? Uh, for well, we don't expect that to happen. We don't expect that to happen. I mean, it's um, 
it will be quite it will be a dangerous president you know i mean i've you know this morning when i spoke with the president of nfl i i directed him that you know whereas they are all hold up where they are himself the secretary general but they have a functional office back in nigeria and that that office has to be briefed fully and that they have to send a protest and a petition formally you know to calf this has to be done and seem to have been received by CAP before they leave Libya. And I think that, you know, that 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 that, that is being done. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.